Okay, so my first question for you now, can I ask you to briefly summarize what you found out while working on this report? This is a report that's not really necessarily producing totally new discoveries, but it is a report that actually provides an authoritative, hopefully authoritative, well uh, thought out a statement by the region. The region represented by former policymakers and researchers and so on, and in a context of deliberation that provide hopefully collective evidence, the most important thing is that the reform process is necessary, but it has to be combined with igniting growth. That austerity for doing reform through fiscal adjustment and monetary policy and so on is necessary, but can be counterproductive, is not combined with efforts to trigger growth because our societies are highly socially mobilized societies. So just austerity is likely to cause instability politically and socially. Brilliant, thank you. And why is this important today? So how do these new findings fit into the broader questions and discussions about this topic? Yes, uh, you asked me about why this project is important today. This project is derived actually through a process of consultation with our General Assembly, uh, which is composed of the research fellows, the most senior researchers in the region who are part of our network. And we all agreed, or most of them agreed, that the macroeconomic uh, economic challenges associated with debt overhang and insustainability of debt and the shocks uh, faced by the COVID and, and more recently and much more significantly by the war on Ukraine and its impact on food security, on trade, has created a huge challenge, development challenge. And so we need actually to look into how to respond to these challenges uh, and also how to uh, aspire to the future and embrace the agenda of climate change uh, and the opportunities and challenges that entails and, and, and they are particularly important in this region, as we know. If you just think of two things, sea level rise and water scarcity. These are tremendous challenges, but then also provide opportunities through uh, pivot to renewable energy, uh, through uh, the knowledge intensive uh, jobs and all these kind of things. But then also we need to deal with uh, chronic social problems such as youth unemployment and informality of economies and so on and so forth. That's brilliant. And within that answer, you mentioned looking to the future and embracing the future. So I've got one final question for you now, which is what do we still need to find out? Put another way, what next for researchers or policymakers working in this area? What should we be asking next? What next for, future, uh, for researchers and policymakers working on development? I think is really is to think through how best you can actually think and do development. And, and, and also to create a closer link between researchers and the policy community, which is lacking in our region. ERF has been in the business for almost 30 years, and we have been trying very hard to enhance the uptake of our research, which has been rigorous and robust. Uh, but we are making some progress, a slow progress, because we need the cooperation of the policymakers and their openness. And I think this would be the most serious challenge. Ideas are there, but adopting the ideas and by the policymakers and being responsive is what we really hope that we will be able to achieve in this region.